We're here at Berry Hill Fisheries on the large lake. I'm going to try and catch a zander again, but this time I'm going to be using a float. Not a pike float, a waggler float, like a matchman's float. And as it gets dark, I'm going to be using, hopefully, if they work, the isotope like this, which is like, I don't know, a glow light, a light stick. We used to call them light sticks years ago. And that's what I'm going to be trying to be using. And I've, I've never caught sand, I don't think, on, on this method with a waggler float like this. I talk to Dave, there's always a chance. It's nice and mild. It's late autumn, leaves are coming off the trees. Look at this oak tree up there. Look at that oak tree, boy. That is a big one. A traditional estate lake. All the other guys are up there, there's about eight of them, I hate. Come down this end of the lake, look, nothing. I've never fished this lake at this end ever before. So we give it a go. Big storms are due to come in, not tonight, but in the next few days, so I thought I'll give it a shot now and end of October, got to be in with a shout for a Berry Hill Xander. Let's get rigged up. Well, I'm all set up, got a couple of rods out there. I'll show you guys what I'm going to be trying to do with these floats. It's a bit uh, oppressive weather. We've had some really, well, unusual weather after that storm, X Hurricane Ophelia, which turned into a post-tropical storm. And when I was fishing a few days ago, man, I was out with Mike and the temperature went I think five, six degrees in 40 minutes, change. It's spooky being Halloween and I am fishing for vampire fish. So, bait is, we start with the rods first I suppose. Rods and reels, Avon rods, what's new there. You get 10, 12 pound line on these outfits. Nice big long wire trace I've got here, a big long wire trace because they said one guy's had five, six pike a few days ago, I think it was. Nothing monstrous, but trust me, there is one truly monstrous fish in this lake that I know of. And you can use these baits. No, I'll show you what they are. They're standard for sand, are these? They're frozen. Um, buy them in the shop here. Get them off, Dave. Oh, he tells me the tip is mackerel, but the centre section, of course, you can't put the hook through there because it's masking the hook and you'll get drop bites. So if you use a centre section about I don't know, a cube, I'm guessing like that he meant. You want to make sure your hair rig it so the hook is above the actual body. And you hook, uh, your hair rig goes through here with a loop, quite a long loop, so keep the hook spare. So I might try that later on. At the moment, I've got just straight baits out. He also tells me, Dave, that it's better to cut a slant on the roach dead bait. So if you're using half a dead bait rather than a straight across, I've always just scissor them in half. But he said that slant is better, maybe it lets more blood into the water, the same with the mackerel. Um, I've got three whole ones on here at the moment, it's been quite, well it's over, it's really spooky today, it's overcast, there's, there's no wind or nothing. I figured there might be a pike on the move first, so that's what I'm after anyway. Then the float is something completely different. That's right, it's a waggler float, but it's got this thing on the top. This is a light stick which is what you can use to call years ago, we used to call it an isotope. No idea, these are my last of my stock I'm using up. They're called Sirelooms, they used to be made by American Cyanamid, and inside they come in a sealed packet. I guess you can still get these in the tackle shops now. And generally they've got a little packet of silica gel crystals inside the packet. Let's get one out for you. They are silica gel crystals, which take out any moisture, if there should there be any moisture in there. So tear the packet open, don't leave the packet on the bank, throw it away. And what I've done, because I couldn't find some valve rubber long enough to, we used to put valve rubber over the top of the float and then push these into the float. That's for like tension carp, 40, 45 years ago. Standard procedure so you could night fish. Now everybody seems to ledger they don't use floats at night very much. I don't see them anyway. I'm going to give it a go, see what I can catch. And I've got it locked either side. This is a bodied wagner there, like a sort of onion one. Shot either side to lock the float. I've plumbed the depth and I've got really one on the bottom. Oh, beat there too, but you see, I know I haven't got a run because I can see the float out there. I'll show you those other floats as well. The other rod's carrying pellet wagglers. I'm using a standard pellet waggler which takes, I don't know, maybe four swan shot, but I've undershotted it. So I've got to say like a double swan shot, SSG and a single there. And that allows the float to sit up a little bit per hour because I have to take into consideration the weight of the bait. And 
what I've done here, you can see, I've hooked it through the back without a hair, but being a barbless hook, it could easily fly off. So I've got a piece of plastic, you can use a piece of rubber band, just a piece of plastic there to actually hold it on the bait, uh, bait on the hook so it doesn't actually slide off and it's suspended. And this one I'm going to fish a little bit shallower. And, well, there's no wind. The object was to move around in the wind to cover some ground, but it's like a mill pond out there, absolutely flat. The floats are just sitting dead still. That wasn't my idea. I wanted it moving around a bit if I could. Just cover some ground, basically. And on the top of this one, I've got... The very same isotope float whipped on, tied tightly with fishing line. It's choking that throat. <laughs> and of course, I'm giving the front end of the roach a good dunking in. The elusive and exclusive Raptor oil. Mmm. Yum yum. Not for me though. With a bobbin, although I can see the floats, it's just a backup. So I've got the visual aspect of the floats, and I've got my bobbin there. Just close the bail arm, put it up. Just there, I've got the chance of audible fish as well, as I don't want to lose any fish at all. <laughs> well, I've had one beep on the buzzer and a little bit of a short run there. It could be a small Xander. So I'm gonna have a cup of tea, there's not much I can do. When you're Xander fishing, you're waiting. Well, like all predator fishing, all fishing is waiting. But it bobbed the float a couple of times, so I might have to go to this half section. But first, I'm gonna have a nice fresh cup of tea. But well, I don't drink tea. Well, you better learn, because you are tonight. Built a bit. Can you afford a hot cup of tea? Hush, oh, float's gone, float's gone, float's gone. Oh, burnt my fingers on the tea bag. I'm pretty sure it's gone. Why can I not see that float? Definitely get that camera sorted for you guys. Oh man, it'd be nice to get the early fish. Way out, I shouldn't laugh, I haven't got it yet. It's a long, long way out. I don't know if it's a small pike, or is it going to be a vampire fish? Checking my other floats. Of course, my tea's going to get cold. Move this for you a bit, people. It is. I'm going to get the net. Get 
and I get the net. What is it? Oh man, <laughs> it's a small one, but it'll do. Come on, good scrapper. And it's in the net, boys. One vampire. What are you doing, Graham? One va vampire fish there, guys, in the net. Get him on the mat and I'll show him to you. Wow, that is a result. And this one, there he goes. I'm gonna turn that so I see what the heck I'm doing. Oh, look at that. That watch, <laughs> that, one, that one fell out. Still got a spare bait. Vampire fang-like teeth there, can you see those? Pretty big mouth for Saturday. Actually, it's not as small as I thought. It's thought it about two pounds. It's more than that. He might go. He might go four. No, I reckon he's about three and a half. Pleased to get that vampire fish. 20 to 6. It's getting Delta Alpha Romeo Kilo. Wonder if I find any BATS tonight. Guys, I've just been filming. You can film over here and the line's going out. So it's gone again. Should be able to see the line cut through the water if I can get it. Let's hope he doesn't drop it. I still see the float pulled down. For these people, cast to exactly, exactly the same place. Let's move that up a bit. Could be, could be same size fish, might be a touch bigger net. Get organised, Graham. It's Halloween. Anything can happen. Carrying a little bit extra weight as well. Yeah. Definitely. Scrapper as well. Come on. Oh. Twice I crashed into my own rod. Can't do it once, you have to do it twice. Vampire fish number two. I mean. There's anglers, and there's danglers. <laughs> wow, this one. Way bigger fish, guys. And he really does have a pair of vampire fangs on him. Got his fin up for you. Lovely looking fish. 
and it's still not dark, but it will be soon. Well, the light is going. They had both those fish, and in fact, a bite very, very early on when I was talking to you on the right hand side. So, I've now brought the middle rod to the right hand side. That is a guaranteed blank for the right hand side, and they probably move over to where I just moved the float from. But Dave just walked around and told me it's quite up there. The general hotspot area is uh, they haven't had a fish yet, they will, they'll get them later on. And another guy's had a couple up there, so maybe they're moving up and down, who knows. But I'm hoping with the bigger baits, I might get a bigger fish. But downside is, Ooh. doesn't show it by the camera, folks. That's a real one. Ooh. There's noises everywhere tonight. Well, it would be Halloween. Well, I've brought the bait in just to show you guys. It's too dark out there. If I do this, you can barely see anything, and it doesn't actually pick up the floats which are way out there and out in front of that bush over there so the lights nearly dark I brought in just to show you I can see these floats 30 yards out but the camera can't so I just brought them in there to show you that's how bright they do actually get and that is the large size I think it's six mil and no problem that will last at least six to twelve hours Happy Halloween, guys. It's my time now. <laughs> Give you a bit more information, guys. Well, I've just missed another two Xander. I don't know what's going on. It's like something's against me out here. Anyway, just to tell you what these are. These are little plastic files inside which is a sort of glass or perspex type cylinder. So there's two chemicals. I've got red here we can get blue red green that's the three i've ever, always ever used and um, we put them on baits for deep sea fishing as well i fish with them off beaches but let's take for instance this one so it's a soft plastic outer coating here with one chemical in it inside there it's like i want to call it a glass file with another chemical in it just before these geese crash into me oh, right in the swim what is it why me? Why can't they go in the swim up there? There's loads of guys up there, Xander fishing, they come in my swim. Anyway, you can see that chemical chemical just move in there. You crack those. This one's an old one, it's not used. You crack them. You break that to mix the two chemicals together, shake it like this. And then you get, like I showed you on the float there earlier, they glow all night. Now, people say, well, I don't want to go through fishing for three or four hours. That's no problem, because whatever you've got, it is now a liquid. So when it's in a liquid state, it can be frozen. So I take mine home, I freeze them. So if I want 12 hours from one light stick, I can have three four hour sessions, short ones in the evening, like tonight if I want to. So those ones I'm using out there, if they don't fizzle out, I should take them home, pop them in the fridge, that freezes the liquids, then that's right, I can use them again. What was that? What was that? I really don't like fishing here on my own at night. <laughs> Pick up guys, it just took me a second to set the camera up. Do the drag up, still running, might be a small fish. Ah, I think I missed him. Man, he had plenty of time, he still missed him. I guess it's a small fish. I did have another one which I didn't show you, it was about a pound, that's all it was. I think I've even got the bait back, just to show you. Mr. Vampire wins that one, I didn't. There you go, yeah. Hook point's all clear, no problem. Let's get it out there. And that one, just as a point of interest, I actually saw the float go under before it even registered on the um, buzzer. Try again. I might 
do what Dave says actually and cut one of those in half now. That's three I've missed. I'll find out. Give it a go. Jesus, the other one's going, the other one's going. And looking around, the float is indeed under. I want to get this one straight out with a half set. Cast it to the left. The wind's picked up. Still got the float under. Just watching. Here we go, line's still going out, I'm going to show you guys. Hopefully you can see this. He's just peeling it and flicking it off the spool, but I've got a whole bait on, so I've got to let him turn it. Oh, that's a better fish. That is a better fish, do I? This one feels like a good one. Is that the guy that mast doesn't come back? Hear that? It's probably him, and it's starting to rain as well. Oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty cute. I can see the float cutting through the water. Ooh. Oh no, he's not that big. Just a good scrapper. Yes, I've got the other lying ground with you, stupid child. Here he comes. I'll try and turn it round for you. Give you guys a bit of. Bit of action. Oh, the other one's gone. Right, come back up again. Oh, yeah, it's me, Tangly. Oh, he's in. It's the Vampiro. Fish is in the net. Nice fish. Get him on the mat. See his eyes. You see his teeth there, look. He's actually got the mesh in the net. Here he is. And there's the teeth. Mr. Vampire Fish. There's the hook. That's the benefit of single barbless hooks. Just check out those teeth and that weird reflective eye. Is that not a strange looking fish? The Xander. America, I think they call them walleye. Maybe they're different species. Yeah. I've got him. He's gone round the trees. Oh no. Got him out, got him out. Okay. Sinti comes in close. Oh, he came off. <laughs> he spat the bait about eight pounds, guys. Sweet, I'm so pleased. Well, I'll tell you something I have learned here, and I haven't done uh, isotope fish, you know, float fishing like this for many years, but we used to pip it down to the same height of a float, so I don't know, let's say inch. But what I've noticed here is because I've undershotted those pellet waggler floats for plenty of buoyancy, I've actually got, well, a reflection of the actual isotope up here. So the isotope lights here, starlight, I think you modern guys might call it the starlights up here then there's a black piece so it's stuck up over the surface of the water then there's a reflection in the water so it actually makes it look instead of say that big it makes it look that big which for me at distance my goodness me i'd see these 50 yards 60 70 yards away no problem the other thing is when you do get the bite those two the light and the reflection close up like this to meet as the float goes under like this the two join up i've seen at least three takes I've had that haven't even registered on the buzzers and yet I notice it takes, it's doing this, it's going down like this 
maybe the float goes right under, then pops up, then I see that distance between the reflection and the actual light go together, so I know there's a fish on there. So I've had at least three takes, I guess some small sander, maybe a big sander that spat the bait out, and, you know, to me, that's a real bonus because it haven't even registered on the bite indicators. I'm learning all the time. Tells his own story, boys. Tells his own story. Just lost another one. Talk good to another angler. Whole bait. I'm giving this one a little bit longer. I can see my starlight out by the island. <laughs> Hmm. Is that zombie? Here he comes, get the net. I'll try, I'll try to stop this one splashing on the top if I can. That's how the last one came out. Splashing on the top. Oh, that's a nice fish. Don't come off, don't splash. Fish of the night, boys. That's a nice fish. Yes. Yes, sir. E. That's the kitty. Whole fish. This one, boys, has fangs and a half. I do not need to get nipped by those front fangs. Here comes the hook, watch. Pop, straight out. That, people, is a nice sounder. And just check the fangs out on that one, people. And the reflective eye. Super fish. Beautiful fish that one is. It's what you call a Halloween special. <laughs> Who's got the biggest fangs? I think he has. There's another thing. You can see the direction that the float's going. See the float's up. It's not pulling any line off, but I keep seeing it pop like this, so I guess it's a small one. Now it's gone under, it's come up, it's gone under. I think I'd have taken the investigation. Probably a small fish. Not running any line at all. It's just, it's just doing this. I think he might have dropped it now. It's weird. The float's just. I can see the float's clear. I don't think it's not moving. Oh, no, fish on. Fish on, people. Oh. Of course, the net's over there. Doesn't feel particularly big. That was bizarre. Wasn't running any line off at all. Probably might spit the bait, this one. I have that feeling. I'll go over the other line. Probably going to spit the bait. Yeah. He's not actually that small, and you won't see it. There's a float. There's a hook. It pinged off. 
Now, if that had been without the float, I definitely would have struck and missed it. So after all that time of the float doing this, he still hadn't taken it properly. Just gonna show him quickly to you. There we go. Another vampire beauty. Wow. I think I've had, I've had a small one I didn't uh, film because it's too small. About six now, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I just hope the zombies don't come out. Mind you, I talked to one of the other anglers, he says, wait till you see the bailiff, he's a right zombie. I'm gonna take, hasn't even pulled the float under, guys. I'm gonna give it a go. Well, he's on. Long, long way out. You can see the float just going along the surface like that would not come under. So what I've done my other rod, I've just pulled it in close. Now again, it's a whole bait. Doesn't feel a monster fish, but my oh, goodness me, they, they twang around a bit, twist and, tw and twang, that's when they come off. So maybe I just play play this one a little bit gingerly. Got him in closer now. So keep the rod down. I don't like him splashing on the surface, that's why they seem to come off. I mess around with cameras, I've lost so many fish trying to film for you guys, it's ridiculous. A different trip, big fish, everything. Oh, this is a kitty. Vampire fish of the night. We've got water on the lens, but boy, it's worth it. Got the other rod as well. Oh, sweet. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a shocker. It's a Halloween special. I think I've got it back. This fish, this fish is what I've been looking for. Got it. See, the beauty of single hooks, you can get them out like this really, really easily. And I just leave mine locked onto the hook like that. Look at the jaws on that one, people. I definitely seem to have had a better fish on those hole baits. There you go. Oh, my goodness me, I can't get the leaf off him. that make him weigh a bit more. I'm figuring he's eight, what do you think? Eight, eight to nine, it's a good fish. Now, if I can just get through the uh, next half hour with no zombies, apocalypse things, nasty things, going bump in the night, and there's the fangs, guys. People always wonder why we look that side. It's because the monitor's that side, guys. We have to see where you're filming. Beautiful fish. That one there, people, is a Berry Hill Special. Steep back, humped here. He doesn't spike me there. There's his fins. Let's get him back. I've had a wonderful session. That is a big fish. That is a nice big fish. Look at that one. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Just so pleased. I was stuck with those hole baits. And from the top of the head like this, he looks like a snook. What they call a fish called a snook. Which I've caught over in Florida, caught in St. Lucia in the Caribbean, Costa Rica. Now they really are game fish, but that one looks cool. Not as cool as I'm going to look when this big camera gets dunked in the water and he kicks off. You can see his gills go in there. Always oh, just hold them to recover. Look at that. A predator of the night. Put a bit more water over his gills like that. That is a big fish, boys. There's my hand. There's my hand. I'll pan back down for you. That's a nice, a nice Xander. He's getting ready to go now. Look at the other. There he goes. There he goes. Away. Gone. Yeehaw. Oh, 
down to my last hole roach. That was in a half. A little piece of plastic over the outside. Hasn't bothered them one bit. Get on there, there we go. Make sure your point's clear. In my case, good old bit of raptor oil and post it out there as far as I can. Oh, please. I'm not sure it's a fish or not, guys. I can see the flow. Oh, I don't want to hit the umbrella. Yeah, I see, that's a benefit. Although that beat then, the float is still up. That's right, guys. That's right. Another one. Thought it was a small one. Half roach. Actually, not so small at all. So what's that? About seven or eight sand. Whack a do. That's a good fishing. I've got to pack up now. It is. This is Ander Heaven here at Berry Hill Fisheries. Well, I've got to say, I've really enjoyed that fishing. I really, really have tonight. It's been a beautiful, f weird weather. Sort of oppressive late autumn, winter, that sort of weather, peculiar weather. But using those floats, I thought I was going to get a lot of drop baits, and I haven't. You know, they've, I have caught fish. Sure, I've missed some, but then you miss some when you're ledgering anyway. So, there's only one other thing to say. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Outdoor show. Ha <laughs> ha!